I got nightmares in my head, I fear Thoughts build up until I can't hear My mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear Thoughts build up until Hello and a warm welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Something went awry close to Christmas time. In fact, there's a headline with the word simply something happened. Something happened close to Christmas time, even prior to the horrific incident on December 30th. Neighbors have come forward to say the Dennises were invited to a street party over Christmas and didn't pitch. According to the Daily Mail, quote, We didn't notice anything until 10 o'clock when we went out to photograph Jupiter and there was a police car parked in front of our driveway with the lights going on. And that's the statement from a trauma surgeon, his words to the Australian. He said, A little bit later we saw a dark 4x4 being towed away by a tow truck. One thing I would like to know is the distance that this vehicle, did this vehicle stop and turn around and come back? What distance was this vehicle ultimately from the impact from Melissa Hoskins? Now, although there seem to be a few clues that the couple may have been arguing, if they did, if they were, the neighbors didn't hear anything. It's also not clear if the party was Christmas Day or the day of the incident, but either way, the fact that the Dennises were absent suggests a brewing discord, doesn't it? Am am I wrong to make that inference? Meanwhile, if we dig even further into Rowan's story, the idea of a pro cyclist well known for his short fuse becomes increasingly obvious. With Rowan in 2015 admitting to his own anger issues in his own words in an interview, Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Bear in mind, uh, there was a kind of a moment's silence, I think a minute's silence during the Australian National Championships where there was a little bit of respect paid and tribute paid to Melissa Hoskins. It's important not to forget her, not to forget the victim in all of this. You can watch that tribute. I'll put a link to that in the description. If you're finding this analysis worthwhile, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. Now, according to ESPN.com, quote, Yet for all that success, Dennis is also known for his temper. It came up at the USA Pro Challenge in August, that's August 2015, where Dennis dominated by winning two of seven stages and finishing second on two others. After winning the opening stage, his BMC racing teammate Taylor Finney, who took up painting during his year-long recovery from injury, referred to Dennis as, quote, a temperamental artist type, a creature of inspiration, end quote. So here we have another teammate who basically seems, I guess, amused by Dennis's temperament. He seems interested in it like a behavioral scientist might be, as opposed to someone who might be directly affected by it. The article goes on to quote Dennis saying, I have been known to sort of have a short fuse, and I think cycling is the way I let that anger out. That's how I vent. So what happens when you take cycling away? Because in December last year, that is what was missing, cycling and thus venting. It's a curious chicken and egg thing. Was cycling causing Dennis to become angry or was it allowing him to vent his anger or both? But if you take cycling out of the equation, is he still getting angry? And you might say, why do young men get angry? Well, it's kind of a thing that I believe is related to testosterone. It's related to the sexual urge, the frustration of the sexual urge, but it's also just related to the... Um, the, the hormone in men, in males, that is meant to make them somewhat aggressive in the sense that they can be competitive. And there's a positive function to that in certain areas, professional sports, business, and also, I guess, in terms of sexual selection. But it can obviously have a dark side. If I can indulge you guys with something from my past, when I went to the UK in the 90s, I stopped regular training for the first time in my life. For the first time ever, mostly due to the cold 
and the wet British climate, I wasn't doing daily swim sessions. And I remember I'd be standing in a long queue in a supermarket, a queue that wasn't going anywhere, feeling impatience slowly turning into anger. And I couldn't understand it until I realized sport had been a natural venting for me. And there, you know, it is something that one needs to learn how to deal with, either by talking to people uh, or facing it in terms of yourself or becoming an ordinary civilian without the luxury of working all of these feelings out to exhaustion. But that's me. So I wonder whether that wasn't Rowan's deal as well. Going back to the article, quote, when dealing with the media, something is done a lot this season. Dennis comes across as thoughtful and courteous, one of the better interviews in the sport. It's out on the course, Finney says, that his temper sometimes shows. That Rowan Dennis can be angry is not news. I'm still quoting from the article. His mid-season switch from Garmin Sharp to BMC Racing in 2014 was unprecedented and understood to be due, at least in part, to frustrations with team management. Where have we heard that before? So the same thing happened five years later, right, in the Tour de France. So it does feel like, it does seem like this is an ongoing thing. Going back to the article, more recently his involvement in a dispute during the USA Pro Challenge. Rowan Dennis threw something at a Jamis Hagen's Berman rider who attacked during a BMC-led nature break, showing his confrontational side. I've always liked things in order, Dennis says, and this is important to pay attention to his own words talking about this issue. I've always liked things in order. So when something really simple hasn't been done or something isn't organized and I've asked for it to be organized, which doesn't happen very often on BMC, it's something that can set me off a bit. That's one of the main things. I'm a bit OCD. That's a nice way of putting it, end quote. And that's his own words saying he's putting it in a nice way that is a bit OCD. And what, is, what do those letters stand for? Obsessive compulsive. But I think there's another way of looking at it. It's kind of being a bit controlling of others, overly controlling in terms of his own home situation. So is a marriage, do you think, going to reveal Rowan eventually to himself, to those around him? If you take cycling away, is a marriage going to reveal Rowan once again? Is, is a marriage within the challenges of the festive season going to lay a lot of that temperament bare? What do you think? Going back to the article, quote, there is a pedigree there that says there is a GC, meaning general classification, potential with this rider, but he's also an angry young man. His reputation precedes him, and that's good. Well, that was their view in 2015. Going back to the article, you need that tenacity as a rider. It's not kindergarten out there. It's war when you go to a race. So you need that edge to rise above adversity, end quote. So as I say, you, there is a kind of a positive aspect where men, young men especially, can sort of harness those feelings of aggression in a competitive environment. The question is, did Rowan's internal war that he was harnessing so well on the cycling f f uh, courses, did that spill over on December 30th? One has the impression he's been allowed to be angry and throw tantrums his whole life with no consequences. Well, until now. I'm not going to take it further than that except to mention one additional incident in 2014. Rowan was 23 years old, and it was around this time, about... Ten years ago, a gust of wind blew him off his bike during the Australian National Championship time trial. So the Australian National Championship uh, uh, events are taking place right now in Australia. I don't think Rowan is taking part. Anyway, at the time, he was very committed, spending 10 to 14 hours a day in an oxygen tent for two months. When he fell, he was ready to quit there and then. So he's 23 years old, right at the beginning of his life as a cyclist, and he was ready and willing to throw the towel in on that after kind of a random event that is, I guess, natural. And so couldn't that have been something that had happened in his marriage 
where something happened that he didn't expect. It's the gust of wind, you know, the marriages are full, full of gusts of wind. And wasn't he ready to quit there and then as well? What he said at the time is also worth noting. He said, quote, I got caught up in the heat of the moment. Now I take a deep breath and count to 10. And if that doesn't work, I count to 100, end quote. Well, it seems not much has changed in 10 years. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.